Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason New Land and this is Trivia Tuesday. Trivia Tuesday, Trivia Tuesday, Trivia, <laughs> Trivia Tuesday, that's it. Vinny, you don't have to make noise every time I do a recording. Today is Tuesday the 17th of September. <laughs> 2024. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes if I haven't said it already. And my website's jasonnewland.com. I've reinstated it, I've re uploaded it again. Not re uploaded it, but put it back online. So it was offline for a, about a week. And maybe less. I'd like to say thank you to Deborah for your PayPal gift. Thank you very much. And left a lovely message saying, thank you for your services. I've been listening for several years and it's helped me to get through a chronic illness. So thank you. Really appreciate that. What else do I need to say before I get on with the exciting stuff I've just had a cheese and tomato roll or I should say I've eaten some of it and eat, Vinny's eating the rest he loves cheese loves cheese oh, I kicked a neighbour's dog today that's a nice start to the recording isn't it it was an accident he's trying to catch a fly same fly that's been in here for about three days. He loves it. I'm so tired. Why did I leave it till eight o'clock in the evening to do this? Oh. How, I, I don't know why I don't, why I, uh, I don't know why I don't make recordings in the early afternoon. That's gonna win up when I'm at my most probably awake ish time, you know. But no, I wait until it's almost time for bed. Vinny, stop moaning. It's not my fault you can't catch the fly. Spider Vinny, Spider Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> it's really rubbish at catching flies. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so his, his friend Archie, it's his best friend. So I take him out. I had a, I talk, spoke to a friend on the phone uh, just after six. So I was getting ready to take him out for a walk at six o'clock couple of hours ago and I got a phone call so I didn't leave here till gone 20 past and he pulled me so hard so I thought I'll just follow him like I'll run with him and he, he, he ran right through the park into the other park there's two parks sort of connected to where his friend was and his friends was the other side of the other park so I let him off and he ran up and started running around with Archie. He was so happy. Now, on the way back, we were just getting back to where I live and I was a little bit tangled up because Archie's got a sister, so there's basically three dogs all on leads on the pavement and they were getting a little bit tangled. So I lifted my leg up to untangle myself and ended up kicking Archie in the head. I say kicking, it clip, clipped him. It was an accident. I wouldn't mean never do that on purpose. 
it was like, I can't believe I did it. What was embarrassing is, bearing in mind, I've done karate, Wing Chun Kung Fu, Jeet Kune Do, uh, was it uh, Taekwondo? I know it's blimey, 10 years ago since I did that. But I used to be able to kick, well kick, never been like a huge high kicker, but I was could kick. Now I'm struggling to lift my leg above a tiny little dog. How embarrassing. <laughs> so it's like, it should be easy. Especially as I'm five foot nine now, not five foot eight like I used to be. The only only man in his fifties that's actually grown in height, which just shows you how unique I is. Nah, nah. Hey, so yesterday. Oh no, now I'm a little bit worried because that fly is on the teacup or the mug. Now I'm finished with the tea, so I'm not that bothered. But if he goes for it, he might end up spilling the mug or tipping the mug over and it'll go all over everything else that's on that little table all over the remote control hey, you know what remote controls can get like when tea is, gets all over them can get very sticky <laughs> so hopefully he won't well he's eyeing it he's literally staring at it right now ah <sighs> Funny to watch, really, because a fly is just doing what flies do on the edges of the cup, which means it's going to get good old scrubbing. And he's transfixed, don't you, Vin? So today is Trivia Tuesday. Yesterday, I did. I just moved on from kicking a dog. I didn't hurt the dog. I didn't, and it was an accident. It was more just, I, I suppose, really, I brushed it, not like with a brush, but it was. It's like oh, I, I apologised. Obviously, I didn't. I said, "Look, if you want to get your own back, you can kick Vinny if you like." And she said, "No, I'd rather kick you." I said, "No, kick Vinny. <laughs> so you can kick me if you like." And I ran because I didn't want to be kicked she scares me so I I'm trying to think if anything else happened last night I got woken up at 1.30 well this morning I guess early hours of Tuesday morning I got woken up 1.30 and it was banging and not the good kind and my neighbour sent me a text message, which I didn't see until I woke up later on, a few hours later, saying, did you hear that banging? And she said that she heard banging at her front window. Which was very strange. Very weird, weird situation. So I'm going to have to... I need to charge my torch up, actually, because the torch ran out of juice. And it's, it's handy to have. Uh, but it is, you call it a flashlight. If maybe you may call it a flashlight in your own country. I'm not, I'm not giving you permission. You may, if you wish, call it a flashlight. Now that might be what you call a torch. I suppose torch is a correct word. But if you use that flat flashlight, that's what I mean when I say torch. Because torches used to be originally the the things that people used to walk around and they'd light it on fire didn't they and it'd have oil or something it'd be like straw or I don't know I'm just thinking of the old movies the old black and white movies Frankenstein and stuff like that yeah that's my references I don't know what the history is or of that but other than that I'm trying to think what else. I 
think I told you about the police coming round. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that yesterday. And that was on Sunday, I think. Uh, and I probably mentioned it on Sunday, to be fair. I might not have mentioned it yesterday. I've updated the website so that the latest recording is on there as a video on the first page. And also the podcasts. Vinny, he's so annoying. It's not. See, when I edit this, you can hear him moving around, can't you? It sounds almost like I'm touching the microphone or something, but it's not. It's him moving around. Can you please move your bum away from me? Don't look at me like that. Things used to, <laughs> used to be so much easier. Um, yeah, so Trivia Tuesday. Now, I'm going to need to use my phone because I don't... I've, I've got very few actual trivia things in my head. So I have to look at my phone to get the trivia. I did do a little bit of research previously. Will you stop... Blimey, Vinny, stay down, please. Wow. I'm not... He keeps getting at it like he wants to see from a higher ground. It's almost like this is his little, I don't know, mountain or something. And he's looking down on his kingdom. So... This is what I looked up before. Car trivia facts. And what I did is I looked up 50 car trivia facts. And then I, this is on chat GPT. And then what I did, I... then asked to check for facts check them 50 to check it for to fact check rather the 50 which it did so i'm just going to read out the correct ones these are just you know ones i've prepared but i'll look at other stuff as well so I'm using ChatGPT01 Preview. So this is their latest model. What? Okay. Which is weird. I mean, automobiles, cars, I don't. I don't even drive. I don't. I never. I remember once I, I was about... Well, my friend had a car, so I would have been probably 16, because most of my friends were older than me when I was at school. So I was 16, he'd probably already turned 17, and he had his own car. And he was driving it, probably with L plates. I think he had his girlfriend with him or something, or maybe he was just driving it anyway. And I laid on the bonnet, for some reason, you know, like they do in the movies and that. And he started the car and he started driving with me laid flat down with my face near the windscreen. Uh, and he kept driving. And I was screaming, please stop, please. That's how I used to scream back then. And he did. Well, obviously he did because... I mean, he's still driving now. I'm still holding on. Yeah, no, it's that was a bit freaky. Luckily, he stopped, which was good. Now, as far as <laughs> as far as stories go, that one probably needs a bit more work. <laughs> it's just a true memory, really. It's a true, true one. I haven't had a lot of uh, experience with cars because I don't drive. I mean, I have, I had driving lessons twice in my life, 
Um, well, I guess it would have to be during my life, wouldn't it? Wouldn't be in the womb. Um, I had driving lessons in 1991 when I was in London. And I had a, I had a job so I could afford driving lessons. So I had a, a job that was paying me enough to have driving lessons. The thing is, I just didn't see the point. Because where I lived in Stratford, you couldn't even drive in a straight line without having to keep stopping and letting cars through because of all the parked cars. It, you know, you couldn't get two cars going either side of the road for hardly any part of the streets that I lived in. I mean, it's different, I know, when you get onto motorways and busier roads and other parts of the country and that, but London was just so congested. Uh, not just on the roads that were, that did move, the traffic moved so slowly because of the congestion, but also you couldn't move particularly fast. I mean, like normal speed limit even, because of all the parked cars. And I just like, uh, I, you know, I partly wish I'd continued because then I would have had a driving license and it would have opened up uh, some opportunities, like job-wise, life-wise, you know, I could have... I mean, technically, because my kind of personality, probably a long-distance lorry driver would have been, yeah, probably been quite a good job for me. Because I'm quite happy to... With solitude, I'm happy with solitude, I'm happy being on my own, and... I don't need to be around people, but I'm okay to be around people at the same time, you know, I'm not, it's, Eva's fine, but I don't need to be around other people, as far as working goes, I'd probably prefer to not be around anyone, so, being a lorry driver would probably suit me, not now, perhaps, but you know, when I was younger, but then I'm not, I can't drive, so it's not a good job at all. But it used to be a well-paid job, being a lorry driver. And especially, like, long distance, like, travelling through Europe, that would have been, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd have been all right. That would have been quite a good job for me. It's, uh as long as I kept myself fit so as long as I was able to exercise because you know sitting down for long hours for a long period of time is you know, not particularly great for anyone so although I, <laughs> well, I do do that now I guess I could have a dog though you can I wonder if you could well, I suppose you can travel around yeah, you can't travel through Europe probably with a dog. But I could have had a dog if I was local, like in the UK. So I could have a dog in there. Or a monkey, like Clyde from Any Which Way But Loose. Or Any Which Way You Can, depending, you know. He was in both. He was also in, uh, was it a Cannonball Run? I think Clyde was in at least one of them movies as well. Yep. Clint Eastwood's most famous co-star an Orangu Tang so yeah I blimey it sounds like quite a nice little fantasy been a long distance lorry driver yeah wow anyway maybe in, in a different life maybe so, I did have driving lessons. Now, this annoyed me, and it's weird. I don't know why. But in 2004, I had driving lessons. Or was it 2005? I think it was 2004. 
in the summertime. Yeah, I had driving lessons and this, I should have got driving lessons with someone that I, no actually because I didn't know anyone, I didn't know any driving instructors, but I did in 2006 because I helped a, I helped someone, or so I, I did hypnosis with someone that that wanted to pass their driving instructor test and had already failed twice and they were worried that we wouldn't be able to do it again if they failed the third time. So I did some hypnosis with them. They asked me to and uh, they went on and passed and ended up opening their own company. And they've had, blimey, 18 years of success. Actually, here's something. One of my family members owns, uh, one of my cousins owns a really big driving instructor school. Didn't even know. Because after this, doing this driving instructor thing, or this not thing, the lady, once she qualified, which was literally, you know, a few days after I saw her, she started sending her pupils to me for their tests, to help them with their tests, test nerves and stuff like that. So it, it, was, it took a, it was a few months later when she sort of uh, had a few people ready. But I was doing groups, like small groups for people. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll look into this. So I sent emails out to all the, the not well, I suppose local, local uh, driving instructor schools within the area, like well, within a hundred mile radius, probably. Well, no, probably 30, 40 mile radius. And I was going to perhaps put on driving tests courses where I lived so people could just travel to me or maybe I could put on a do like a one uh, like a, a two hour group session for individual organisations or driving schools anyway that's a long way around it but I, I sent I sent these emails out this was 2011 or was it 2010 no 2009 or 2010, something like that. Or was it 2009? Seven, eight, 2000, yeah, it was around that time. Well, I got an email back saying, are you, are you the Jason Newland that, and she asked me these personal questions, this person, about my dad's mate, my dad's name and my brother's name. I'm like, who the hell is this? And it was from a driving school. And I thought, uh, what's going on? And then she sent a message back saying, uh, laughing like, sorry to freak you out, it's your cousin. I'm like, wow. So yeah, she, she's got with her husband She's got a driving school, like it's a big one as well. It's like, like, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's nationwide, but it's definitely a quite a, a large area. So that's quite cool. Never gave me any work though. Can you believe it? My own blood, my own flesh and blood didn't give me no work. Is it flesh and blood if it's your cousin? It's, it's, it, it's related, but it's not necessarily, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I know I've got 50% of my dad's DNA and 50% of my mum's DNA. I think that's how it works, isn't it? So my cousin is his... My aunt, my dad's brother's daughter. 
so my dad had 50% of my nan's DNA, 50% of my granddad's DNA, and so did my uncle, 50% of his dad, 50% of granddad and grandma's, grandmother's, which means that wouldn't they then share the same DNA? Because if, if that works out that way, so if the parents, if I share 50% of my mum's DNA, 50% of my dad's DNA, then also my other two brothers would also share 50% of my mum's DNA and 50% of my dad's DNA. So doesn't that make us identical DNA wise? But we're not at all. Finny, stop it. Maybe this is a time that I regret not listening to anything that anyone said ever during my educational years. Tickle tummy, tickle tummy. Shh, shh, shush. Okay, that was the wrong time to tickle him. I hope that wasn't too loud. It wasn't quiet, was it? Depends how far in we are. Um, oh, I think I will. So yeah, two thousand four. I went. I had driving lessons. <laughs> this is going to sound a little bit petty, okay? But I had driving lessons, and the driving instructor was a young lad. He couldn't have been more than early 20s, he was very young and this is petty right I found him annoying because he was over enthusiastic I get this it sounds petty and I'd like it sounds weird to say it out loud but he was super buzzed so like yeah, come, let's do it. Oh, right, let's go. So you can do it. Let's go. Let's go. It's gonna go this way now. Oh, you just stop, 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 and like to keep on the right side of the road, the right side. No, the left side of it. The right side. The, the correct side. Eh, hey, watch out for that lorry. Uh, yeah, I know you wanted to be a road driver. I don't, I don't need to hear about that now. I right, come on, let's go. And like so, a bit hyper. A bit like a Jack Russell stalking a stalking a fly. I think he said a pea then. Stalking a pea. So that was I stopped taking lessons because I just got I just couldn't face it. I couldn't He's literally trying to catch the fly midair and he's nowhere near it. And he's fast, but he's not that fast. He's like, he's trying to grab it and the fly is just laughing at him. It's just, and it, the fly is almost like the, the, he's flying in slow motion. <laughs> and he can't catch it. I heard the fly giggling. I did. What are you doing? Calm down. So, yeah. Trivia, trivia, we've got to do the trivia things, so where are we? So here's some trivia bits about cars. Here's the first one. The first automobile, okay, so this is the first automobile, Carl Benz painted, paint, painted, painted, patented, the first automobile powered by an internal combustion engine in 1886, known as the Benz Patent Motor Wagon. Benz. Mercedes Benz. Oh, I wonder if it's the same person. So let's see. I need to go back. He is annoying me so much. Vinny. Why have you got to do this while I'm doing a recording? Please, calm yourself down. 
So I'm going to read the correct ones out because it did fetch. <laughs> Ford's assembly line. Henry Ford introduced the moving assembly line in 1913. Yep. These aren't very interesting, are they? Um, Volkswagen Beetle Legacy. Over 21 million units were produced of the Volkswagen Beetle Legacy. Fastest production car. Right. As of 2023, that's as far back as this is, this is, that's when this cut off on ChatGPT. They're not as up to date as uh, now. As of 2023, the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus is among the fastest production cars. Is 300 Plus me 300 miles an hour? I don't know. The best-selling car is the Toyota Corolla, which has sold 50 million units since 1966. Is that worldwide, or is this just in America? Because I'm not sure. Hopefully they're going worldwide, and if it is worldwide, do they keep track of what they've sold in other countries? I don't know. Rolls Royce hood ornament. This I found this interested. Interested? The Spirit of Ecstasy, which is the name of the Rolls Royce hood ornament ornament, didn't know it had a name. Spirit of Ecstasy was first introduced in nineteen eleven. So even though I don't know a lot about cars, I do know what a Rolls Royce is. I know that Rolls Royces have those like birdie things on the top, don't they? So, number seven, Tesla's autopilot. Introduced in 2014 with advanced dri driver, driver assistance features. Uh, then you've got Ferrari's prancing horse. Ferrari's prancing horse. Inspired by World War One pilot Francesco Baracca's emblem. Oh, I guess the Ferrari Prince and all. So that's the emblem on the Ferrari. I don't think I've ever even seen a Ferrari. Uh, outside of... Um, Tom Selleck. Not Bergerac, not Kojak. Blimey. Tom Selleck. I think the name of his TV program now. That's crazy. He's only 79 years old. Uh, breakout role. Magnum, blimey. Magnum. I used to watch that, Magnum P.I. Oh, that was a great show. So yeah, um, ba, 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 da, ba, da. yeah, he had a he had a Ferrari. That's the only reason I mentioned him. Now this I didn't know. Lamborghini, another car I've never seen, but I've heard of. Can't spell it, even though it's in front of me. Is it weird? It's one of those names or words. Even though it's in front of me, I still can't spell it. <laughs> it's that complicated to spell. Lamborghini. Founded after Ferruccio Lamborghini's dispute with Enzo Ferrari. Okay. I read somewhere else that there was something to do with uh, uh, an issue with the Ferrari like some kind of mechanical issue and Lamborghini weren't happy so he went in going isn't it weird isn't it so he goes on and makes a car that's 
possibly even more exciting or more you know than a Ferrari is maybe I mean I've never I decided not to get a Ferrari or Lamborghini that's what I decided like what's the point who needs that you know especially at the time I had a black and white television so I thought I get a TV and get a TV instead I think I got a colour TV in 2004. <laughs> that was my first colour TV. Blimey. It's not. It wasn't. But there was a period when I was watching a black and white TV for a couple of years in the early 2000s. And there was no reason for it. Zero. <laughs> I could have had a TV bigger than the one I've got now if I'd wanted to. But for some reason, I didn't. Didn't get one very weird I don't know what was going on at the time well I do but <sighs> and that was when I was doing the sales and I was things were going quite well for me electric early electric cars electric cars were popular in the late 19th and early 20th centuries really electric cars Right, I'm going to have to ask more questions now. Expand on 10. Expand on 10, I need to just... Electric cars were popular. Confirming, expanding on fact number, early electric cars. Tell me, tell me more. So, okay. Here's an expanded explanation. Early electric cars. Historic context. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, electric vehicles, EVS, EVs, emerged as a prominent mode of transportation. During this period, the automotive, automotive industry was in its infancy and there was no clear consensus on which type of propulsion, steam, electric or gasoline, would dominate. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Um, urban preference. Electric cars. Popularity and market share. Urban preference. Electric cars were particularly popular in the urban areas. Cities had shorter travel distances and readily available electricity, making EVs convenient for daily use. Market dominance. Around 1900, Electric vehicles accounted for about one third of all vehicles on the road in the United States. In some regions in the state, even outsold gasoline powered cars. Is this true? Advantage is, is this true? In fact, I need to, I need to get it fact checked. Fact check. Fact check. Because this, I don't remember electric cars being around. The network connection was lost. Yeah, because you've been lying to me. That's why. Fact check it. The network connection. Verifying accuracy. That sounds like porky pies, doesn't it? I mean, what next? Like flying cars. Although flying cars do exist now, don't they? Did you know that? Yeah, flying cars. Did you not know that? Yeah. Flying cars. They are now a thing. Later the deck. Right, it's true. So it's correct. Ease of operation, accurate. Electric cars did not require hand cranking, unlike gasoline cars at the time. Quite correct. Electric car motors operated almost silently. Wow. They, they created no exhaust emissions, low maintenance, fewer moving parts, no gear shifting. Why on earth did we end up using that horrible gasoline and petrol? Money, baby, money. 
Baker money vehicle correct found in like this Wow so they sold over 13,000 vehicles from between 1907 to 1939 this is a Detroit electric company target audience women drivers accurate apparently electric cars were marketed towards women okay this is what it says here I'm not saying this even though it's my voice saying it is I'm just I'm just a messenger that's what it says here okay I don't, I don't agree with anything I ever read but apparently it's accurate because I've done doubled I have uh, fact checked target audience for the electric early the the early electric cars like a hundred years ago or whatever electric cars were marketed towards women <clears throat> due to their ease of use and cleanliness <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness Aff and also affluent individuals the higher cost of electric vehicles made them more accessible to the wealthy Wow. Typical speeds were 15 to 20 miles an hour with ranges of 20 to 50 miles per charge. And it's taken us a whole century to get back to that. Because of greed, basically. I would argue, possibly, because of all the money. Why did we make ourselves so dependent upon... All reserves of another nation when we didn't need to or maybe we didn't I don't know I mean I wonder sometimes with solar power if we had solar power like solar panels on every single roof so every, every time a, 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 um, a slate was made every slate went on roofs were solar powered would we have would we then not have to use like we'd have enough electricity for everything we needed I do wonder about that you know if all the bricks had solar panels on the outside of the bricks and all the trees were made of solar panels <laughs> on every leaf solar panels on the leaves and the pavements made of solar panels or the sidewalks the roads made us all the cars everything just had solar panels on them but you know in a discreet way not so it didn't necessarily have to be look like mirrors or anything That'd be weird. But it's like just I know it costs money to do to start with, but if it made if it was self sufficiency, I mean the whole world would benefit. Imagine we made enough so that everybody because the sun sun's no one belong. No one. Well, so far, no one owns the sun. It's here for everyone, and it shines every day. You know, it goes round the planet, and like once a day, it travels round round the Earth, doesn't it? The sun, and it's. You know, we don't necessarily get the sun all day long because it's in Australia, when the moon takes over because it, is, it does shifts don't they so but the sun's always working the, the moon's always working really but they kind of you know they're, they're just pole opposites to each other so we what, is, what do we do we the sun what goes around us and we go around the moon and it's just, it's just the way it works. It's good. It's, it's it's handy. Whoever invented that did quite a good job. It seems to seems to work okay. 
But if we could get some kind of solar panels, even like just our shoes, or get solar panel hats, everyone walking around with solar panel hats, or solar panel jumpers, or uh, coats, jackets, solar pa- solar panel glasses, just so we can t- always like just taken in some of that energy that can then be used makes sense to me Could you imagine if all you had to do if you needed to oh I need to heat the boiler up but you know instead of gas have it are you can you get electric boiler or is it always gas I don't know. Is there any such thing as an electric boiler? I don't know. Maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. But, okay, let's say you want to... You want to watch television. And... Because this could be like a double thing, couldn't it? You could say, well, I want to watch telly, but have it connected to a treadmill. So you had to walk. If you wanted to watch it sitting down, then you had to run for, let's say, half an hour for, for, if you wanted to watch a two hour movie, you had to run for, let's say, 20 minutes on a treadmill. And then you could sit down and watch the two hour movie. Or if you wanted to just to watch it while it was on just watch it like through um, without any running you could just walk slowly but still create enough energy for the television to run so there'd be the benefit double benefit of watching the television watching a movie for example but also that level of fitness so I have the ideas I'll move on. <sighs> Better roads, favoured long distance travel, suited to gas leak car. Oh, so the infrastructure was a reason why they didn't really want to have electric cars because gas leak cars were better on the roads that they had, whoever they are battery limitations well you know what okay fair enough at the time there was going to be battery limitations also there would be the you know the charging stations would have been limited but then there wouldn't have been that many cars on the road at that time so over time growing with the population of new drivers and new cars on the road there'd be more charging stations places to charge and because it was there was money in it they would work on creating much more advanced electric cars because you imagine we've got um, what's his name Uh, Elon Musk and where he is, like he's, he, you know, he's got his Elon Musk cars, Teslas. The thing is, so if we'd spent the last 100 years, or 120, I say we, but if the car manufacturers spent the last 120 years working on ways of improving the electric car can you imagine where it would be now we probably would have been driving around flying around in cars for the last 50 years because it'd be so because they'd have been focused on that instead of just focusing on gasoline and ways to basically get people to consume petrol and they would have focused on the electric cars 
so the infrastructure would have been there because they'd have built the infrastructure you know what I mean but I imagine what the world would be different wouldn't it I mean there's a car now if you knew this but this is out off the top of my head now uh, do, 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 do. there's a new car that uh, da, 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 water fueled car so here's a different thing so it says the idea of a car that runs on water has been a subject of many claims but most of these have been found to be pseudoscience or fraudulent. Stanley Meyer in 95 unveiled a converted dune buggy that he claimed could run on water. He claimed to have driven over 100 miles on one gallon of tap water. However, they found his claims to be fraudulent in 96. Electrolysis, electro, electrolysis most cars you know, to separate water into hydrogen. Toyota is apparently developing in a water powered engine that uses electrolysis to create a self sustainable cycle. Wow. Okay, there's a lot more about the Stanley Meyer than I realised. There's a lot of conspiracies about him. I saw there was a, a car a water powered car that's been developed it's recently I watched it I don't know if it was a, a documentary I had to have a break then because not not for me but because Vinny kept barking yeah but it wasn't like a, a big loud bark. It was just just random, random barks because he could hear stuff. <laughs> I don't know what, but he could hear stuff. I've also readjusted where I'm sitting. So I'm now sitting in my normal seat while I sit on the sofa on the right side. This is why I sit when I watch telly. It's much more comfortable. So I've moved the table closer so the microphone can still reach me. And this is more comfortable for Vinny because this is how he's used to being. So he can see he's, he's a bit more settled. This is where he's used to sitting and lying down on this side. So he's uh, a lot calmer now. It's a lot more relaxing for me as well. <sighs> it's amazing, isn't it? Just being on the right side compared to the left side. It feels... It feels right. <laughs> it feels yummy. So, back to the cars. I'll be honest with you, I don't know... The problem is, because I know the recordings are supposed to be boring and stuff, but I don't find anything particularly interesting about cars. It's just... Vinny! He's still trying to, find, trying to get to that. I'll tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a different thing. I'm going to move from cars to... So I'm going to start a new one. Ask a new one. So, okay. Give me 20 trivia facts from 2024. No, I won't do, won't do it because it's not that up to date. For 2023. Okay. Right, here we go. By the way, it's not necessarily true what I come out with because it's, it, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, ChatGPT is one of the best ones. 
but at the same time, you know, this new model is supposed to be the most accurate model, one of the most accurate models in the world. And I've been with ChatGPT since it started be being available to the public, which was maybe a couple of years ago now. But it's, yeah, so I try and find stuff. It helps me with creating images. I still build the image myself, but it helps me to create sometimes the, the type of image I want, part maybe some part of the image. So, a bit of trivia from 2023. Twitter became X. Apparently, it causes caused mass confusion as people wondered if they needed to solve what if they needed to solve for it. To solve for it, it doesn't even make sense. I don't know what that means. Barbie mania. The release of the Barbie movie led to a global shortage of pink paint. <laughs> wow. Proven that life in plastic is indeed fantastic and monochromatic. I don't know what that means. So, I didn't know that. Or I kind of vaguely remember that. Not, not the movie. I struggled with that movie. Now, I think it might have gone over my head. A bit. Now, I know it's popular, and I've tried to watch it. I've not watched it all the way through, and it's you know visually it's spectacular, really lovely visual image. You know the colours and the cinematography and all that stuff. I just I don't know. Maybe because I never had a Barbie doll. Maybe I don't quite get it. I did have an Action Man doll. But I kind of almost felt that it wasn't aiming at me. That I wasn't their, their main audience. And I didn't, I, feel, I felt a little bit left out by that. A little bit. Ostracised maybe, a little bit. A little bit kind of. No longer in the circle. Of movies, you know, and I'd like to, I like to still be included in, as part of the audience for movies, new movies coming out, and there's, I just didn't, can quite get into it. it. I think it's one of those movies that I'm gonna watch in a few years' time and probably think, wow, this is amazing. Why didn't I like it to start with? You know, it could have been I just wasn't in the right frame of mind when I was watching it. Or my expectations were too high because of the huge publicity. And for example, I, I refused to watch Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, Titanic, um, Gladiator, even The Sopranos when it started. I refused to watch that stuff because I thought, too hyped, couldn't be bothered, not watching it. And every one of those movies were great, great movies. I, I could have done without Titanic, to be fair. I was, it was more a visual spectacle, you know, the way they made the ship and, you know, the all that stuff. So that was, and, <laughs> you know, certain parts of it was interesting at the time because I was I was a young man at the time when it came out or was it early 90s and it was a good song it was a Celine John that sung that song so I okay forget Titanic that wasn't really didn't really not that bothered about that but also um what's it the Matrix Everyone was talking about The Matrix, so I purposely didn't watch it. I don't care about The Matrix. And when I did watch it, I loved it. I even watched the third one. I even watched the fourth one, actually. And the, the, the third one was... It wasn't the best one in the series. 
Um, I didn't even want to watch the second Terminator 2. That's the one. Didn't watch that. Brilliant movie. Brilliant. I tell you something though. Uh, there's the Emmy Awards has just been on and it was like promoting the winners. One of the winners was, well, there's three, three winners they were talking about. The first one was Reindeer, I think. Reindeer, I've watched that. It was a Netflix TV show. The other two, one was Shogun and the other one was The Bear. And both the Sh Shogun and The Bear are on Disney+. Plus. And I thought, okay, I'll have a look at them. I, don't, I mean, I remember the original Shogun TV show with Richard Chamberlain. And it went on forever. But I liked it. You know, those are the days where <sighs> epic TV shows would last for hours and hours and hours each episode. Like really, like three hours per episode, stuff like that four hours, hundred hours per episode. It was just it just went on and on and on. But it was a great T V show. This was in the eighties, the early eighties, I'd say. I don't know, but I'm because I think it was based on a true story about a Westerner who got stranded in Japan and they he he ended up becoming a samurai or so I don't know something like that it might not be true I mean it wasn't a documentary because I mean just some of the scenes I didn't think they'd allow it you know with uh, camera crew and that because it was a bit rude at times but the bear, so I thought, well, I don't really want to watch the show, uh, the Shogun again. I'll be honest, I don't really want to go through that again. I went through it, it's like, I went through it, I did it. It's a little bit like Breaking Bad. I got through it. I don't really feel the need to revisit. It's It's done. It's, I guess, a bit like a wedding or a holiday with your family. You got through it. You don't want to go back. You'd be glad you 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 you, you know you're home. Let's just move on. <laughs> it's maybe it's not like that, but it's just I've seen. If it's the same show, then I've seen it. It's going to be exactly the same as before. I mean, it's going to have better special effects and... But I can't see... Visually, it'll be more spectacular. But to be fair, as far as the script goes, it was a good script. It was based on the, on the, the very successful novel. And Richard Chamberlain was in it. Richard Chamberlain was the star and Richard Chamberlain was... Groovy. Bearing in mind he was in Dr. Kildare. In the 60s. I do believe. Richard Chamberlain. He's 90. He's 90. Wow. Born in 1934. He's 90. Just goes to show, doesn't it? You learn to be a samurai and it keeps you in good stead physically, doesn't it? It's a it's a very healthy kind of martial arts to learn. So being end up being a shogun and stuff, that really helped him with his longevity. Education, he got a bachelor's of arts in nineteen fifty six. Filmography The Purple Helmet No, that's a difference, not him The Blimey, he still made movies 2018 And it was like 103 then 
So he he started making movies in 1960. Secret of the Purple, Hel- not Helmet, a Purple Reef. And he did, he was in Julius Caesar, The Three Musketeers, Tower Inferno, Four Musketeers. And these were huge movies. Slipper and the Rose. He was in The Swarm, which was a, I think that was a horror movie. King Solomon's Mines. Return of the Musketeers. So he came back in 1989 as Aramis. Wow. Uh, Just what? Oh, he did a voice role for Justice League, Gods and Monsters, so it it was a cartoon. But television films... Okay, let's move away from that. Television series. Dr. Kildare, 1961 to 66. Now, for those who don't know about Dr. Kildare, it was good. It was, I'm pretty sure it was black and white, but it might have been colour. It was... A good show. I actually enjoyed it. I used to watch it on... Um, I think they used to show it... I wasn't alive at that time. When it was on. Originally. But I used to watch it in the early 80s. And they, I think they used to show it in... Early evening time. Like on BBC Two. Maybe Channel 4. And part of the reason they showed it might have been because of the success of Shogun. But Shogun wasn't the only TV series that was huge. So that was 1980. He won Golden Globe Award for Best Actor. Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Outstanding Leading Actor. But I remember he was in an... No. What are you doing? He was in more than that. See, this is annoying me now, because he was... I know for a fact that he was in another big, really big... Maybe it was a movie then. A TV movie. Let's have a look. Let's go back. Television series. Television movies. Television films. Man in the Iron Mask. I didn't know that was a television movie. The Thornbirds. The Thornbirds. See, why is this a TV show? That was a TV show, but it got it under television films. There was four episodes, so it's not a film, is it? It was a TV show. And that's what I was looking for. Because... Was he in The Seagulls? The Thornbirds, The Missing Years. Okay, that was 96. There was a show, right, that was really, really freaky that was on. It was a TV show and it was... Let me have a look. I'll always remember it because it was a blind girl, a blind lady, and... Okay, movie, TV show. It's called something like Seagull Island. There are a few shows now related to seagulls. Right, let's have a look. The Hangout, All at Sea, Monkman and Seagulls, Genius Guide, The Hanging Gale. Nope, All at Sea, Nope. I'm going to find it because I know it was absolutely freaky. Seriously. Very, very freaky show. And 
and basically this bloke was we well, you kept you could hear what she was hearing the the lady so her world was through like hearing but you could also see what was happening was which was different from what she was hearing it was very strange um Oh, Seagull Island, episode 1.2. Wow, I don't remember that. Barbara, oh. Okay, I won't read it out because the plot isn't very nice. It's a bit. Oh. Oh. Well, that's not how I remember it. Hmm. Very unusual. Never mind. I won't go any further with that one because I genuinely... What on earth's going on? So, flying cars approved. The world's first flying car... I told you there's a flying car, didn't I? The world's first flying car received FAA approval. I don't know what FAA stands for. F I know what FA stands for here. Um, approval. So now you can complain about traffic jams in the sky too. <laughs> Lab-grown chicken. A lab-grown chicken meat was approved for sale in the US. Making chickens everywhere, Brius, Beaver Sigh Relief. It's doing its own jokes here. Apple Vision Pro. Apple unv unveiled its Vision Pro AR. I don't know what that stands for. AR. Artificial. Re 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 headset for $3,499. It's the most expensive. Um, it's doing its own jokes here, saying it's the most expensive way to walk into walls in your own home. 3D printed cheesecake. What? 3D printed cheesecake. Scientists. <laughs> I don't know why that's even funny. What? What? Scientists successfully. 3D printed a cheesecake finally merging. Is this true? This is world's oldest dog, Bobby. A dog who's 31 years old from Portugal became the world's oldest canine. 31, blimey. A Chinese zoo went viral when visitors forced, thought that its sun bear was just a per <laughs> <laughs> just a person in a costume but it wasn't it was actually a bear um, a robot conductor led a Korean orchestra wow this is in 2023 an AI created song featuring fake goat vocals of Drake and The Weeknd went viral I can't even remember that one, I think. I like The weekend. I also like Tuesdays and Wednesdays. <laughs> Marathon Pub Crawl. A man set a world record by visiting 67 pubs in 24 hours. 67 pubs in 24 hours. Now, the only way that would be even possible is you'd need to find a town with a lot of pubs. I mean, it's an obvious statement. You're not going to travel from town to town that only has two pubs. But there are places, like when I went to Ireland, I lived in Carlo, which is South Ireland. Carlo, Carlo, 
Carlo Town near Kilkenny or something. Carlo, County Carlo. You go into the town and there was like pub after pub after pub after pub. There was so many pubs. So you could literally probably visit 10, 15 pubs in like an hour. If you if you just like went in and then came out, went in, came, you know, you wouldn't have enough time to drink anything. So, yeah, if you did that and just kept going to another town, found enough towns that had all those kinds of pubs. Or if you go to really, really popular holiday destination, I'm guessing places like Blackpool in the summer, there's loads of pubs and bars that you can go into. Or London. There's probably places where there's like so many pubs in a small area. That's what I'm guessing. I can't think of any other places where pubs would be like really popular. But 24 hours, you could travel quite a distance in that. 67 pubs. I could get, I think you'd get around more than 67 pubs in 24 hours. I don't know why I want to do it now. But it would be, it just have to be very strategic. But then, technically, you'd need to call them up and say, look, just, other rules, you can only go in during opening hours. Or can you go, because, you know, if you can use the full 24 hours and go at 3 o'clock in the morning when they're closed, but the landlord lets you in, you visit the pub, you know, I don't know what the rules are. If that was a the case, then 67 pubs wouldn't be a huge thing to do, I don't think. I'm just trying to think, how many pubs are there here? There's none. There's, on the way to town, from this direction, going towards town, there's one, two... Three, four, four pubs on the way to town, and then in town there's a pub there, there's a pub there, there's a pub there, five, six, seven, calm down mate, seven, and eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. So there's probably 20 pubs just in this town, which you could get to in the next two hours. You could visit all 20 pubs in two hours probably. Let's say three hours. Two, four, six. So you're like already... In three hours, you're already done, you know, 30%. Yeah. I might do that. I might try and... But do you have... I mean, if you have to have a drink in all all the pubs, then no. 67 drinks. Even if it was just 67 bottles of water, you'd need to walk around with a bucket. Um, goldfish drivers. Scientists taught goldfish to drive a rope. <laughs> this has got to be just really. Scientists taught goldfish to drive a robotic car. It, it, I don't. I don't even want to say about that. Electric flying taxis in Paris. So Paris has tested electric flying taxis to prepare for the 2024 Olympics. So this is a year ago. This is 2023. So I don't know if that if that's... But there are flying cars now. Airbag jeans 
a company released airbag jeans for motorcyclists. <laughs> As, uh, you, you, you might just have airbag everything. And it you might just like sit inside a big airbag with holes in for your eyes so you can see and just little so you can get your hands out and I mean that's gotta look quite weird. Airbags for you. I suppose unless so it'll only come out if there's an there's a crash. So you might as well have your whole body airbagged, yeah. Unless the aura's out which would be quite weird to look at. Record-breaking push-ups. An athlete did over 3,000 push-ups in one hour. Yeah, I've seen that actually on YouTube. Or he did... I think he did 1,000. Uh, it wasn't in an hour, but it was 1,000 non-stop. He did it in... I think about 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. 3,000 push-ups in one hour. That is a lot. I mean, you think that's... How many minutes in an hour? So 60? 60 minutes in an hour. So... 60 times by 10 see if you did 10 push ups a minute that's 600 20 a minute 1000 to so yeah to 3000 you need to be doing so one a second so how many seconds in a minute 60 60 seconds in a minute and then 60 so 60 times by 60 What's that? Let's have a work it out. 60. Oh, come on. Yeah, just... Why are these apps? I'm not interested in getting paying for an app. It's a calculator. Why would I want to pay for a calculator? Times by 60. 36. No, 60. Not 6. 6, 0. Times by 6, 0. 3,600. It's kind of nearly one every, like, one and a half seconds, something like that. It's quite a lot. One, two, yeah, f for a whole hour. I mean, yeah, mate, for, for a minute, I guess it's possible. So if you did a minute and you did 60 press-ups or push-ups, press-ups, push-ups, the same, isn't it? Isn't it? Or push-ups... Oh, push-ups, that's no, pull-ups. I don't know, I think press-ups and push-ups are the same. So you did 60 in a minute. I mean, I can see how that would be possible if you rushed it, you know, or 50 in a minute. I mean, I could probably... I mean, if you break it down, I could do, yeah, I could do 10 push-ups in 10 seconds. Like 60 in a minute, nah. <laughs> no. I mean, probably could, but like, after a bit of training, I could probably work up to it. I'm pretty sure I couldn't do, I don't know if I could even do 60 push-ups now. I could do 30 or 40, but 60, nah. not without getting a little bit, oh, so, yeah, no, I can do 50, because I was doing 50, yeah, I can do 50, 50 push-ups, without too much, effort. so, I guess, if I pushed it, I could probably get to 80 to 100, but I would be very exhausted, and possibly pull a muscle doing it. So, there's no point. I don't need that record breaker. Sweat-powered wearables. 
engineers develop devices that turn sweat into electricity. Wow. Yeah, I, I've got nothing to say about that one. Giant rubber duck. I mean, in the summer, bearing in mind the uh, the pond that seems to it's like a pond, something, isn't it? It's like you know what I mean. The sweat can get a little bit. I mean, if that could produce electricity. My underpants alone could probably power the t the whole town I live in. Um, giant rubber duck tour. The world's largest rubber duck tour. Hub. Vinny, just keep still for a second. He's so, he's like, huh, right, left, right, left, right, love. He's shaking the whole, what's it, that I'm sitting on. The world's largest rubber duck toured harbours worldwide, confusing ducks and uh, asteroid sample return. NASA's Osiris Rex Rex mission returns samples from asteroid Bennu, giving Earth its first special delivery from space. Uh, bee vaccine. The first vaccine for bees was approved. Wow, ensuring our future honey supplies are free, are uh, safe rather. A vaccine for bees. Blimey, I didn't even know that was a thing. I can do that as well, Vinny. I can just move suddenly, make a whole chair just wobble. Uh, number 20, black hole aims at Earth. Scientists found ice nice. Yeah, that's a nice one. Um... Let's have a look. Okay, right, I've got an idea. So I'm going to ask now for some podcast trivia. I just want to see what it comes up with. Give me some podcast trivia. Come on. Give me some podcast trivia. Yeah. Okay. So, origin of the term podcast. The word podcast is a blend of iPod and port broadcast. It was first coined by journalist Ben Hamsley in 2004 in an article in The Guardian. Some of this might be lies, but I'm going to read it out anyway. The first podcast... So the early 2000s saw the emergence of the first podcasts with pioneers like Christopher Linden and Adam Curry leading the way. Apple's, Apple's influence. So in 2005, Apple added podcast support to iTunes, significantly boosting the medium's popularity by making podcasts easily accessible to iPod users and now is massive growth so as of 2023 there are over 2 million active podcasts and more than 48 million podcast episodes available worldwide the most popular genres or genres include society and culture business comedy news and true crime i know true crime is a very popular thing and i've watched a couple of youtube things on true crime and i can see why people get caught up in it because it is i don't like it but it's interesting it's it is it's just it's quite gripping and it's like no nah, don't want to be gripped thanks global audience over 100 million people in the united states listen to at least one podcast each month and that's out of what 360 million people blimey the longest marathon podcast so this is the longest marathon podcast 
the record for the longest uninterrupted live broadcast podcast is over 150 hours achieved by a team from Talkathon in 2016 hmm so I'm wondering Two thousand sixteen hundred and fifty hours. That's quite a lot, isn't it? So more than one person could do. I mean technically was it twenty four how many days is that? Twenty four forty eight twenty four 96 24 24 so you're looking at like yeah 150 hours or like 8 days solid 24 hours a day nah and I don't think I'm going to go for that record it's not even the case of I couldn't do it because I suppose I could in a sense of if I didn't have to go anywhere, I could, I wouldn't be, t I mean, I'd be asleep, so you'd be able to hear me snoring, but I'd still be doing the pod, you know, I'd still be on the podcast, audio-wise, but I couldn't stream live for 150 hours, I don't think any, I don't know anywhere where you could even do that. Uh, serial Phenomenon, the True Crime Podcast Serial. Released in 2014, and often credited to bringing podcasts into mainstream popularity. It's weird, isn't it? Because I've been doing podcasts since 2006, and they didn't become popular till 2014, apparently. Hmm. Educational tool. Many universities offer lectures and course materials in podcast form making higher education more accessible to the public. Um, celebrity hosts, high, pro figure, high profile figures like Michelle Obama, um, Max Shepard and Oprah Winfrey have launched their own successful podcasts. And of course, Joe Rogan signed a deal with Spotify for over 100 million 2020 because he is the he's the top podcaster in the world and you got international podcast day wow 30th of september so everyone celebrates yay i did notice actually going back to what it said earlier 2014 i noticed the podcast starting to get more popular after 2014 you know especially around the 2017 you know 16 17 18 onwards seemed to sort of grow a bit more for a while uh, multilingual content see I'm still not sure how to do that because if I could do this I only really speak this language. So I don't know if people could listen to this in a different language. But would it be of a different voice? If it could be translated to a different voice. But then it wouldn't be me then, would it? Really. But I remember someone telling me that I've got a bit of a following in China. So people got, well, I've got, I've got an audience in China. But they they have to log in via like a proxy, like VPN, because they're not allowed to. They don't have access to the Western internet. That's what this person said. I don't know. So they said, "Yeah, we, we we listen. We listen to you. We 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 celebrate you. We have statues of you." No, I didn't say that. But that'd be so cool. I'd be brilliant. I'd love to go to China. So, uh, 
That's a lot of people. It'd be a bit overwhelming, I think, if it was too many people. Because I'm not great with crowds, necessarily. But, yeah. Imagine being... Being popular in such a large country. You could literally... I mean, it, it has happened for some people, in, like musicians. Uh, was it David, David Hasselhoff? Huge music star in Germany. Like the number one music star. I don't know if he is now, but he was for quite a while. And we knew him, well the general public would have known him because of Knight Rider and then Baywatch. But he was a huge star as a singer in Germany. So there are some people that make it really big in other countries, yet they're almost unknown in their own country. But who would care? I mean, basically, imagine if you... Who is it who made it big in America before they made it big here? Oh, I can't remember. There's a there's an English singer or British singer that were a lot bigger in America than here before, and then they came back and. And now I tell you one uh, comedian, the Scottish comedian that did the Late Show, Craig Ferguson, is it? He wasn't a star here. Star in America, um, but he wasn't. He was never. Re he might have been in Scotland. I don't know, but he was never really like a big star in the UK or in England. Vinny, will you just calm down? It's been seventeen hours. Can you calm down now, please, baby? And I remember watching it. I had a DVD of him because you know, being fanatical on stand-up comedy. I bought a, what well, was a tape recorder, a tape of uh, Craig Ferguson, isn't it, I think. In, like, I don't know, 1990 or something. So, let's have a look. Podcast advertising review in the US surpassed 1 billion 2021. Uh, binge listening. A significant number of listeners refer to prefer to binge multiple podcast episodes in one sitting, much like watching television. Easy entry. Okay. Starting a podcast doesn't require expensive equipment. Many successful podcasters begin with just a smartphone and a good idea. Yep. Um, podcasting cars. Well, I wouldn't know about that because I don't drive. Um... Uh, Revival of audio dramas. Fictional podcasts like Welcome to Night Vale have revived the tradition of radio dramas, offering serialised and storytelling in audio form. Another thing that my, my brother said about this, lis listening speed. Many podcast enthusiasts listen at an increased speed, 1.5 times or 2% or 2 times to consume more content in less time. My brother told me he does that. So when he listens to, I don't know if it's YouTube videos or audio books or stuff like that, he listens on two times so he can, I think he listens when he's on the treadmill or on an exercise bike and he listens like, twice as fast so we can listen quicker yeah it doesn't doesn't really work for me to be honest with you no I'm more I prefer slow I'm just slow <laughs> that's just the way it is I don't I don't want fast oh, I watched that program The Bear so I thought it's an Emmy Award winner I'll just watch it watch the first episode let's have a listen see what it's like I'm sure it's really good. I'm sure it is. But I had to turn it off after about 15 minutes. It's just too full on. It's non-stop. 
talking, 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 talking. One person talking, then another person talking. And I didn't know who any of the characters were. Didn't know why they were saying why they were, what they were saying. I guess you get to find out later on as the, the, the character develops, you know. But it was too... A little bit too... Too fast paced for me. Uh, it was another TV show years ago called The Thick of It or In the Thick of It, which is a comedy show about a press office, I think. Or was it about. Is it a press office or political thing? And it had the, one of the stars of who used to be a Doctor Who, the Scottish one. But he played the Doctor Who as with a Scottish accent, not the Scottish Doctor Who. That played with an English accent. And it was a really good show. And it was funny. But I couldn't. I couldn't keep up with it. It was just too fast. It was like. We're like really really super speed. And I don't. I can watch action movies like that. But when it comes to dialogue. I can't follow. Really fast talking. Just yeah. Can't. I can sometimes, but I don't find it relaxing. And I was sitting watching that The Bear, which is set in this sandwich shop, and there was nothing relaxing about watching it at all. It's like, uh, I mean, I don't necessarily watch a movie or a TV show to be relaxed, you know, it's entertainment, but it was just too full on. It was, yeah. So that's I'm going to be giving that one a miss. I mean, it's it's a Emmy Award winning, so it's very popular. I just it's too full on. I don't I like you know The Walking Dead. I love The Walking Dead. But now, all the the spin off series is. Of the Walking Dead seem to have followed in the footsteps of the last few series or seasons of the Walking Dead original show by being mixing excitement maybe for every minute every minute of excitement there's 10 minutes of real slow dialogue and even for me, that was a bit too slow. It sometimes, I mean, I, there was a mo, you you know, some of the characters. It needed to go slow because they were, they were popular characters, and maybe they're coming coming towards their end of their time on the show. So it was a build up, and you know, but even the new shows, they just. Parts were good, but then it's like slow again. How slow can you row? It's, it gets a just. Maybe they pick up. I didn't watch more than like two episodes of each one. And I just. I think with The Walking Dead, it got to the point where The Walking Dead were no longer part of the show, they weren't the most important part all about the humans and how the humans were actually worse than the zombies so also it's weird with a with a walking dead every time they go to a different place and meet new people they've all got a different name for the zombies like the walking dead and then there's the munchers the smunchers the um the night walkers the strollers, the smelly ones, the just so many different weird, <laughs> the crunchies, different different names, and isn't it weird, right? Well, I find it weird that out of all the places they go to, not one person calls them zombies. It, you know, just makes me wonder. Makes me wonder, 
Why? Why, 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 why? They don't call them zombies. Oh, wonder. <laughs> My little zombie. Z -z 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 zombie. Yeah, so that's Trivia Tuesday. A little bit disappointing. Oh, I feel a little bit disappointed myself. Wasn't quite what I hoped for. I was. I wasn't expecting fireworks to go off at the end of the recording. I didn't necessarily expect to be, you know, the knock on the door and someone's handing me a big award, an Oscar, anything like that. I didn't, you know, I didn't expect that. But, uh, I mean, I would have enjoyed it more if Finney had just kept still and quiet just for a little while. And he's looking at me like, what, me? What have I done? I've just been sitting here. I haven't done anything. I've just been sitting here like a good little boy. What, what, are, you, what are you looking at me for? What, what? What What? What do you mean, what? You know what? I ain't done nothing. Yeah, you haven't. You're doing it right now. You're looking at the fly. And you're going to move suddenly and bang the settee. And everyone will hear it. See? You're looking again. All you can do is focus on that fly, isn't it? Yep, there you go. Oh, dear. Well, I'm going to go now. Oh, yes. So, thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself, because you do deserve to be happy. Take care. Bye.